Welcome to Charts This Week. My name is David Linton. I run Updata and this week's edition comes to you from London for Monday the 9th of November. And we start as always by looking at uh, Brent. Uh, the big story uh, which we will look at of course is the move in the dollar last week. Um, but And of course we know that as the dollar um, uh, goes up, commodities tend to fall, they're inversely correlated. Uh, the, at the moment actually the correlation is slightly positive so um, uh, remember this is a rolling 65 day correlation so it will change as we see that correlation kicking back in. Uh, so it's just interesting that we, we saw quite a big move down in crude last week um, when um, uh, we had the, the rise in the dollar, it was much as what we'd expect. So this level that we saw uh, it, in September, October, this sort of uh, on, on Brent, this level of about uh, $46, $46 is now being tested uh, is quite heavily. And of course, the low, the 42.50 low that we saw back in August is, is really the the, um, the area we'd expect uh, to come under pressure. Uh, if we look at the cloud, uh, these prices coming in from um, Thomson Reuters icon by the way, uh, Updater is just running on top of your, your Thomson Reuters icon. Uh, we see here uh, we we are below on the cloud, really hitting cloud resistance here. Uh, so that really is consistent. Um, we've we've come back into the cloud, hit that resistance. Uh, so whilst we're below the cloud, we would expect falls to the downside. Remember that's medium term. That's the uh, daily chart. We're thinking weeks ahead. And if we look at, uh, we've talked about the seasonality pretty well every week. We know it's pretty bad for this time of year. So we would expect pressure to the downside still on crude. If we look at the 60 minute chart, we see here we had a, a we had a short um, reaction here. This is what tends to happen, you get big moves down, uh, s small counter trend moves, we're back below the cloud so that puts us in a bearish frame short term. If we take out this 46.50 level then of course that would be even more bearish. Shift T on your updated system will give you all the trends and targets. And we do have a downside target here to 44.40 on Brent. Uh, that's a 7% downside from here. So uh, quite interesting there. And if we look at WTI, similarly as we would expect, it's below the cloud as well. Shift T, just to give you the WTI target, 42.75. That's only 4% downside. So um, more downside. Uh, for Brent right now. And if we look at the spread, spread is really just still holding around this $3 level. Um, and uh, I noticed in our morning call this morning that uh, we're uh, seeing moves on, on the spread as well. So um, really worth keeping an eye on that too. If we take a look at uh, US Nat Gas, uh, below on the weekly, which is very bearish, um, below on the daily and the seasonality is bad, so that's long term and medium term bearish. If we look at the uh, the daily chart, really key here that we fell out of this sideways range. We talked about that quite a bit last week. Uh, we have found support at around 225, but um, the downward pressure on US Nat gas is there. A little bit of a reaction, a recovery reaction where we come down, we're back above the cloud, but the moment we take out this sort of 220 level, then we would expect moves to the downside. We've got 228 as the uh, short term target. We do have some thrusts off that bottom, so um, 257, 262, 252, there's around 10 to 12, anywhere from 8 to 12 percent there. You can see the percentages on this target. So at the moment, it looks like we might just get a little bit of respite uh, on. on uh, Henry Hub, and if you are trading Henry Hub, of course, the one-minute charts will give you the really near-term trends and targets. So 229 is a cluster that we're just playing for at the moment. Uh, we do have 255 here, but that's not activated. We'd never need to move above 240 in order to activate that. If I just down in my bottom right-hand corner, go for a smaller box size, 232, 232. So there's this 230 level back to that low that we saw last week is is looking quite likely based on on, on these charts. If we take a look at European gas, um, just how low can European gas prices go? Uh, MBP taking out the the low we saw back in August. Uh, and if we look at the 60 minute on MBP, we see here really is shift T, shift T will give us the trends and targets. 
downside targets here of 35.85, 37.40. So uh, really quite worrying there. And if we go to uh, the one minute chart, shift T will give you the trends and targets there as well. 36.85 and 37.25 downside targets there. So we're seeing uh, MBP certainly coming under a lot more pressure. TTF again uh, hitting new lows this morning down to 17.52. Of course, we've been giving these um, targets for for some time uh, on these on, on these uh, products, and that we're just seeing progressively that we're getting there. Shift T, uh, we've got downside targets to 17.33, 16.48 is the biggest downside target, but 17.15. Remember these prices are all coming in real time off the uh, consolidated broker feed here, or you can run on your trade port screen. Um, and if we look at uh, NCG hitting new lows this morning, as is uh, gas pool down another one and a half percent. So really no big surprises there. European gas markets having a bad start to the week. And if we just look at the curves, uh, we see the action on the curves, um, not much change there. So it's it's the curve shape still much the same. If we go into um, German power, uh, we go into European power products. Uh, firstly, we see the German power chart just hitting resistance here. I mean, this has been a long decline, which we've talked about for a very long time. Uh, and, you know, whilst we're below this cloud, it's hard to be to be bullish. We need to see German power really back above 31 um, and we said get used to seeing a 2 in front of it some time ago and, and here if we look on the 60 minute chart um, we're back below that. We had a little bit of respite uh, but we're back below that on the on the German uh, power chart when, in the cloud and shift T will give us the targets. We do have an upside target to 31 but 15 but it's counter trend and 28.35 28.40 and 28.25 is where we're we're seeing targets at the moment on the 60 minute chart. And of course if you're trading German power this is the chart to use. The one minute point and figure shift T. These are all the um, broker prices coming in and again it can be coming off your trade port screen and here we see the downside targets that we're currently given last week, given a level around 29.30, 29.40, 28.75, 28.85. These are the levels that we're currently gunning for. So if you're trading the uh, the power markets, those charts are invaluable. And a lot of traders trading uh, uh, German power use updated just for that. Uh, if we look at UK base load, uh, making new lows. Again, if we just look at the, uh, the 60 minute chart, Shift T will give us the uh, targets, a little upside target here to 41.75 on um, the quarterly base load contract, but new lows would be another 7% downside. So we are seeing pressure there as well. And Nordpool really seeing new lows again, taking out the September low this morning. Um, so that's uh, the daily chart, really seeing that uh, just that completely bearish nature of the power market there. And if we look at the uh, 60 minute chart, this is on the uh, quarterly contract, not quite below yet on the September uh, uh, lows. Shift T gives us the downside target and we really don't want to see that low being taken out because that suggests another 20% downside. So just keep an eye on those targets. And again, don't forget to look at your one minute charts if you're looking at that. If we look at uh, coal and emissions, um, here we see on uh, coal, uh, we have come back below the cloud, so that puts us back into a bearish frame of mind. It's just looking like a little bit of a mini recovery there with crude, but Shift T will show us that we've got this downside target of 45.60. That's a further 4% downside, so that's pretty key. Emissions bullish on the weekly, bullish on the daily, but has turned bearish on the 60 minutes. So that's interesting that we're just seeing emissions coming off. Uh, one of the bright spots in energy that has been going up. Shift T, this is the uh, the ECX contract. This is uh, you come off either your Bloomberg or your, your Reuters system. And we see here down 4%. Um, so uh, potential downside here at the moment in play. So that's that's interesting, 804, 818. So it looks like we might just come back to test this near eight level. If you're trading emissions, these one minute point and figure charts are absolutely vital. Of course, the big news last week was in Forex. And for some time we have been saying 
that uh, the dollar would stage a recovery because you had this big move here, consolidation pattern. The next thing you would expect is another big move out of the consolidation pattern, and we're starting to see that now. Uh, if we take out this, uh, only another sort of 1% upside, if we take out this uh, high that we saw, we expect the dollar to run. We really do see the dollar having a year much the same as, as 2014. So big moves in the dollar means, of course, commodities under pressure. And uh, if we look at the, just the short-term chart of the dollar index, this is it. It's on, in the uptrend on the 60-minute chart. Shift T will give you the trends and targets. And we see here that we are we do have this upside of around to 103, which would take us to a new high. That's around 4.5% upside from here just for the dollar. Of course, the euro saw the falls last week. We, we predicted this in our report the week before, of course. Um, and many clients got that report and read it. Um, and the really key thing here was that uh, the dollar did just break through um, this key level and when we saw that the week before last we said expect big falls in the dollar and that's uh, in the euro dollar and that's what we're now seeing 107 this morning but it looks very likely now that this uh, this 105 level will be taken out and of course uh, the downside pressure is very much there uh, so take a look at that special report we did talk about how low the euro can go shift T we see here downside targets 105, 105.40, 105.20, that's 3% downside, and that would be a new low. So once you see new lows, of course, that's bad for the price. And if you are trading uh, the currency or just want to keep a very close eye on it, have seen a bit of a recovery here this morning um, off the 107 level, um, and Shift T will give you the trends and targets there. So these these are the on the one minute chart, these downside targets are there. As we change the box side, we start to see the new targets kicking in. Has to be said, whilst there are some t thrust targets, there's nothing really terribly exciting there. So really worth noting that as well. If we take a look at um, the uh, sterling chart, We've been bearish on sterling as well, saying the strong dollar would have an impact. Uh, and interestingly, we've taken out this 151 level. So big moves down in sterling, as we predicted. Uh, so that really does take us to uh, new lows. This 150 level, psychologically important for sterling, coming under pressure against the dollar. Downside target of 147.80. That target was given back in August, and that is still there, another 2% downside. So really... Um, quite interesting there. If we look at the uh, some of the other currencies, uh, just Euro sterling, uh, this chart we see here the Euro had a bit of a recovery. Euro has been falling against sterling, but with sterling's falls on Thursday, Friday, we just saw a little bit of respite for the Euro sterling chart. Shift T will give you the trends and targets. We had, notice how we had that downside target given in early October, 76, 70, 60. That was what was given and that was what's met. You really can't ignore these ta targets. Um, and we do have the downtrend uh, at the moment hanging over us. So uh, keep an eye on that. And of course, the one minute charts will give you the targets. Norwegian Krona, uh, we said last week that uh, we saw it coming back a little bit. Uh, and that's indeed what has happened. And we are below the cloud here. Shift T, this is Krona to the Euro. Uh, Shift T, and we're seeing here um, nine is the downside and that's another three percent although we are just testing support here so just keep an eye on that chart as well um, euro euro swiss um, just interesting here that it's really struggling to recover below that catastrophic fall that we saw back in uh, january um, and if we look at uh, euro sterling this chart was looking pretty strong for sterling but of course had a little bit of of a pullback last week but this the euro sterling chart looking like we will get back above the levels that we saw in January with that catastrophic failure so that's quite uh, an interesting chart as well that's the daily chart if we take a look at uh, stock markets uh, we'll start just with the S&P 500 uh, didn't didn't perform brilliantly in the week we, we saw a little bit of a pullback here we see that show in the 60 minute chart remember this is weekly daily 60 minutes so this is long medium short term long medium short term so as I go through these charts I just get a multiple view 
um, and you can download these uh, displays. This is Bloomberg, of course. Uh, you can download these displays from the updater indicator library. So, uh, so from the updater uh, layouts library. So here in uh, desktops, you'll find the, these layouts. So um, first of all, we look at uh, the uh, S&P 500. Um, and we see that the medium long-term picture is unchanged. Still have these upside targets to play for, but we've just got a new one building here on the short term. We're above the cloud, so we're bullish on all time frames. We are now back through on the lagging line. So your uh, US market's looking pretty bullish. If we take a look at the NASDAQ, it tends to be a lead indicator for uh, the US market. It's been above and clearly bullish. Uh, we never even got close to testing the cloud on the, uh, on the weekly chart and we're bullish on the daily. Still 8.6% upside here, and there's a massive 21% upside uh, on, on this market as well on the medium term. So really a lot to play for still on these markets. If we take a look at the U European markets. Uh, FTSE just got bullish again through the cloud last week. It really has just wandered through. Bearish on the, on the weekly, and the 60 minute is really choppy, and we're just below on the short term. So a lot of sideways, uh, targets FTSE sort of really um, could go either way but we do have this upside target of 17% here on the medium term and the downside target wasn't activated but we do have some downward pressure there um, so not looking as strong as the US market we look at the DAX um, DAX is bullish on all time frames here uh, strong support on the weekly on the on the one percent chart and upside so this market looking a bit better than FTSE and last of all let's just take a quick look at uh, Asian markets uh, tend to lead the week of course and uh, Japanese market now just starting to come back through on the daily so looking bullish um, medium uh, long medium and short term and quite good upside targets there for Japan and we take a look at uh, the Chinese market uh, China was a bit worrying last week, just coming back through here on the daily, um, so this market looking pretty bullish as well. And then last of all, if we take a look at uh, the Indian market, one of my favorite emerging markets, uh, if we look at the, uh, the, the Sensex, uh, we see here uh, bullish on the weekly, still a bit bearish on the daily here below the cloud and bearish on the 60 minute chart so this market's still not really recovering yet so um, time to wait and until that does that's it for this week until next week happy charting see you then